Welcome to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. I am so delighted to have you with me today, and we are being brought to you by Sherry Blair, the financial consultant whose whole goal is to help women grow beautiful financial futures. You can reach her at 619-997-0416 for a complimentary consultation. She's also reachable at SherryBlairFinancialServices.com, spelled C-H-E-R-I-B-L-A-I-R, FinancialServices.com. We are talking today about the greatest habits in the world. And let's face it, guys, you know, habits are here to stay, and we're pretty much run by them, whether we like it or not. So one of the things that Og Mandino taught us was create great habits, strong habits, powerful habits, and then become a slave to those. And we are going to be talking today with Dave Blanchard, who is the CEO of the Og Mandino Leadership Institute. And we're going to be talking about Og's work. He wrote a very famous book called The Greatest Salesman in the World. And you know, in my work as a life transitions expert and in my writings, I'm also an author and a speaker, I'm often helping people deal with change. I'm often helping them deal with that unexpected stuff that happens to us that takes us out of our comfort zone and into some kind of circumstance that usually we weren't planning on. Sometimes change is fabulous, but you know what? Even good change, even when it's change that we welcome because let's say we got married or we moved or we had a baby, it still puts us in relationship with the unfamiliar. And humans have a discomfort with the unfamiliar. So part of my work is helping people develop processes and tools that help them deal with change in a positive way. Well, I recently became, and I'm embarrassed actually to say recently because many of you out there, I think, know Og Mandino's work. Again, he wrote The Greatest Salesman in the World. And he is, a, well, he is considered probably a, a, a mentor to millions of people because this book has sold for years. I believe it came out in 1968 and it has sold to millions of people. And today we are going to be talking to Dave Blanchard, who is really sort of the absolute highest level living expert on Og and his work, because Og's wife sought Dave out after his death and, and asked him to carry on the work. And, and so much has been created out of that, including screenplays. So there's so much we want to talk to Dave about in just a few minutes. But one of the things, I want to tell you just a little bit about Og Mandino, because I tell you, it's changed my life meeting Dave and doing some reading about this man. Um, he, this book, The Greatest Salesman in the World, is a simple story of, of a camel, um, camel boy named Hafid who's just trying to raise money so that, like so many guys out there, <laughs> make money so he can marry the girl of his dreams, right? And who would think a simple story like that would contain wisdom that has wisdom from the ages, ancient wisdom, that has changed the lives of many, many people out there. And so before we begin our conversation with Dave, I wanted to read to you, the, you see the central piece in The Greatest Salesman in the World are these 10 scrolls that contain this ancient wisdom. So I'm not going to read you each scroll because there are many words in each scroll. But the idea is really cool. You take one at a time and you work with it for 30 days. I right now am working with scroll one. 
And I'm telling you, something happens every time you hear those words and read those words. But here's the basic message of each of the scrolls. Scroll one, I will form good habits and become their slave. I love that. And as I was saying earlier, we're going to be slave to our habits. So let's make them good ones. Scroll two, I will greet this day with love in my heart. I love this one because this is kind of like what I call setting an intention, right? You, you just start the day knowing that love is going to be the centerpiece of that day for you. Scroll three, I will persist until I succeed. I don't know this to be true for sure, but I'm going to ask Dave. I have a feeling that most of the people in the world who have not succeeded didn't succeed primarily because they didn't persist. But we'll find that out. Scroll four. I am nature's greatest miracle. Now, I interpret that as self-love which is so critical for all of us. If we're going to succeed, we have to believe we can. We have to believe we're worthy. And so I am nature's greatest miracle. It's like a great statement of self-love, in my opinion. Scroll five. I will live this day as if it is my last. Oh, I love that one. I think that speaks for itself. I don't need to say any more. Scroll six. Today, I will be the master of my emotions. This is really special, too, because, at, you know, as a therapist, of course, I encourage people to feel and express their emotions. But when we let our emotions run the show, we almost can't get anything else done. Because unless we feel good, might as well go back to bed. You know, <laughs> or unless everybody says what we hope they'll say that day, we're not going to be able to function successfully. We don't want that. That's not going to help us do what we want to do that day. All right. Scroll seven. I will laugh at the world. Love that one. Because we all know we have to have a sense of humor because life is unpredictable. Life often doesn't turn out the way we hoped. And if we cannot laugh about it, we're probably going to end up crying about it. <laughs> Scroll eight. Today, I will multiply, multiply my value a hundredfold. Love that. Scroll nine. And this apparently was one of Ogmandino's biggest uh, areas of wisdom. He, this is something he really, really believed in strongly. I will act now. He said this many, many times. I will act now. So, guys, we got to stop talking about it. We have to do it. We have to go into action. And scroll 10, I will pray for guidance. The acknowledgement that there is a higher wisdom and that we need to tap into it that we need to become part of it to really step out in the ways that we want to, the ways we're supposed to. I love this line from scroll one. I will not fail as the others, for in, in my hands I now hold the charts, which are these 10 scrolls, which will guide me through perilous waters to shores which only yesterday seemed but a dream. So without further ado, I'm going to bring to reality one of my dreams, which was to interview Dave Blanchard, who I have mentioned is the CEO of the Ogmandino Leadership Institute. So let me tell you a little bit more about Dave. He's delivered over 500 speeches everywhere from Boston to Budapest. His audiences include entrepreneurs, sales and marketing teams, business executives, health professionals, athletes, students, and couples. He is also an author of three books. And I have two of them right here. This is one. 
today I begin a new life, and uh, which is all about intentional creation. Then there is the observer's chair, the miracle of self-healing esteem, and equanimity, which is the um, conquering Mount Entrepreneur is the subtitle. Dave create, but here's the thing that we're also going to talk about today that I'm so excited about. Dave created a, an assessment tool called the Habit Finder. And what I understand, but I'm, I'll ask Dave and make sure, is that because we've now established that our habits are hugely influential in what we create and what we do in our lives, this assessment helps us know what kinds of habits and what kind of thinking we tend to have. So, and by the way, I took this test, actually just kind of in doing research before I did this interview with Dave, and I found it to be fascinating. It's so simple when you take it that Quite honestly, you find yourself going, this can't possibly tell me anything about myself. And then Dave and I started talking and he did the debriefing. He's, he's debriefed over 100,000 individuals, but I was one of the lucky ones. And he started telling me things about myself that blew me away. So I said, okay, we have to talk about this on the show because there's no way that simple little test could have told you these things about me. So without any further ado, may I please welcome to Change It Up with Paula Shaw today, Mr. Dave Blanchard. Hi, Dave. Hi, Paula. Great to be with you. Thank you. I'm so delighted to have you on this show. And because I really am looking forward to talking about that habit finder test that we did, which blew me away. As I said, it's incredible, incredible. So you actually created this yourself, Dave, or did your team do it? There's a mathematics developed at the University of Tennessee called axiological mathematics. It uh -huh. uses Cantor's transfinite calculus to measure our habits of thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we took that mathematics and for the last 18 years have perfected it. Um, I've been the lead on that. I've fallen in love with Cantor's transfinite calculus. I hated mathematics in school. I don't want to tell you that. When there's a purpose and it can get right down to how a person thinks, uh -huh. it's just magic. It's almost magical. You said it's easy to take. Wow, how do they get to that? I know. Well, it's all, math it's all mathematics. It's totally objective. Dave. Before we go any further, we have to take a break. And I think when we come back, let's just go mm -hmm. right from there and talk about the, this test, how and why it works. Okay. We'll be right back. Okay, Dave, he'll, they'll put commercials in so we can just keep rolling. Okay, Dave, you ready? Welcome back to Change It Up with Paula Shaw Radio. We are talking about developing great habits today. In fact, the greatest habits in the world. And we're talking with one of the greatest experts in the world, Dave Blanchard, who is the CEO of the Og Mandino Leadership Institute. And if you just joined us, if you don't know Og Mandino's work, he wrote The Greatest Salesman in the World. And this is a book of wisdom that has helped many, many people achieve success over the years since 1968. And right now I'm talking with Dave Blanchard, who developed an assessment tool that we're talking about. And, and Dave, I'm, I'm just wondering too, does the Habit Finder work once, once you've taken it and you have your uh, debriefing and you, you see your results, yes. then is there a way that you use that with the 10 scrolls? Is there a prescribed method or do you just, oh. can you use both? Absolutely prescribed. In your first segment, you talked about these scrolls, these 10 scrolls. Yes. They really were the driver for the creation of the assessment. Because Og's teaching us in these 10 scrolls, the habits we're going to want to develop, 
and he says, I've surrendered my free will to these years of accumulated habits, these bad habits, okay. and the past deeds of my life have already marked out a path which threatens to imprison my future. Right. So the first question was, can we actually find a way to measure them? That was the question. And I have to parenthetically tell you something. When Og wrote this book 50 years ago, he wrote the beginning and the end, these 10 scrolls that are in the middle. Yes. He, Betty said he was getting ornery, because that's the word she used. He's getting ornery because he didn't know what to write. And he took two days off of work, and the second night, he's lying in bed, and he hears the words in his mind, today I begin a new life. Today I shed my old skin, which had too long suffered the bruises of failure and the wounds of mediocrity. Today I'm born anew in the birthplace. is a vineyard where there's fruit for all. You can almost feel him jumping out of bed, running into his study, pulling out his IBM Selectric typewriter, putting in one piece of paper, and just starting to type. And she said he did that for 12 hours. Whoa. Came into the room and said, they're done. So not only are these scrolls, written in the language of the intrinsic, multiple applications, interpretations are brilliant. They're written in a night, one night. It's incredible. Yeah. So now we've got the principles and the habits. How do we measure it? So we take the science that helps us understand balances and nobody needs to remember this, but intrinsic, extrinsic, systemic thought. That's how we think mm -hmm. and that's how we measure it words or phrases that represent that, you rank them the way you think they should be, and it reveals the thinking habit. And we can then take those habits, and we have created a comprehensive coaching practicum that, that ties the 10 scrolls and the principles for maximizing the habit. For an example, if you want to connect with people more effectively, there's a whole section on intrinsic validation how to step into someone's world and listen and take down those walls. Supported by scroll two, I'll greet this day with love in my heart, agape love, this caring enough to even do this. So the scrolls support every one of the habits that are talked about in the, in the practicum. So the assessment measures, the practicum teaches, the scrolls support. It's a magical combination. Oh, it's a beautiful combination. I love that. And I love what you're saying because actually this was like divine wisdom that was channeled to him in a night, which is incredible and, and explains why they've touched so many people over the years in such a powerful way. Yes. Og could never promote the book from the stage. He was never a sales guy. You see speakers now, a lot of them are promoting stuff, you know? Exactly. He couldn't do that because he would say, I was the transcriptionist. I just took dictation for a night. <laughs> I know where this came from. <laughs> That's how he felt. He was very humbled by the experience. I love that. Now, I wonder, Dave, before uh, his wife was Betty, right? Mm -hmm. Betty Mendia, before yes, Betty sir. contacted you, were you already familiar with this work? Had you been working with the scrolls yourself mm. or did they come into your life at that time? I was in the film business, writing and directing TV commercials, radio shows, directing them. And I had four feature film scripts under my belt. And the producers came to town on one of Og's books called The Christ Commission. Mm -hmm. And they said, who should write this? And they got referred to me. So I had the privilege of writing the feature film script for the book, The Christ Commission. And then I flew down to Phoenix and delivered it to Betty. And what I did not know was the date of the finish was her birthday. We just developed a fast friendship. That was 1997. So in 2000, when the rights to the greatest salesman came up, she called me. I was standing in the cancellation line of the Lion King in New York City in January. It's freezing cold. I read Dave. The, right, the, right, the rights are not being renewed. I wanted to call you first. Would you be interested? And that's how it started. Wow. I came home. I left the film business. And we started building a company around these principles and starting with measurement. And we found this mathematical science and have had so much fun perfecting it. And as you said, we've administered this on 100,000 people. We got a pretty good idea how people think. Mm -hmm. It's interesting in professions like entrepreneurs, salespeople have very specific patterns of how they yeah. think, challenges they face. Oh yeah. 
Ah, that's so interesting. In fact, I know, are we able to, to share uh, my assessment if we want to do that? I've got it here. You do. Okay. Before, <laughs> I do. Before we go there, I'm, I'm wondering, first of all, I should explain to our listeners, the way to take this assessment is to go to, what is the web address, Dave? It's habitfinder.com. Okay forward slash Paula. Ah. Habitfinder.com forward slash Paula. Make sure you put the Paula as that extension. Then we can honor Paula for the opportunity of sharing this with you. And when you put in that extension, you get to take the assessment for free. It's $99, but you get to take it for free. Oh. And if you heard about it on the show, you can click and sign up for a 30-minute free consultation with a Habit Finder specialist. These are not salespeople. They're in our customer service department. They really are there to help you better understand the results of your assessment. So habitfinder.com forward slash Paula, and you get to take it for free. And it, and it doesn't take a lot of time, I can tell everybody, but boy what you will learn about yourself. Because some of the things, Dave, that you told me that the test showed, I was kind of aware of, but not so aware that it was how it was affecting me. And I think that's really important. You know, some of the things that you told me, I thought, oh yeah, that's me. But I think, I, I wanna ask you to explain a little bit to our listeners, why are habits so powerful in our life? Well, for an example, you know, may we talk about one of your measurements? Absolutely. Because it's, it's, it's a powerful gift that a lot of independent thinkers have, entrepreneurial type people. It's the ability to vividly visualize. And we measure the extent to which a person can do that. Mm -hmm. Now we know the risks. Everybody see this. This is like a a live fire hose, all fully charged and nobody's hanging on to it. It could be like that. And most people with this gift are in fantasy or catastrophe. That's where they live. They live in their mind, they tolerate reality, and they beat themselves up because they can't figure out how to create it. We see that pattern so many times. Well, Paula, you have that gift to vividly visualize. Now, the question is, are you escaping into the future? and imagine what it's going to be like after everything's created. Are you in catastrophe, worst case scenarios? Or, and hardly anybody knows this, or are you using this gift constructively to get an inspired idea, an intuitive impression, a creative solution that if you're wired to a functional MRI would ignite part of your brain that's normally dormant, ignite your passion and drive your action. Most entrepreneurs, the action's boring, mundane, burdensome, repetitive, hard. For someone who knows how to use this gift, it's all passion-driven. It's working without the cost or tracking the time. And we feel great about ourselves because we're taking our life, creating and celebrating, creating and celebrating. Right. And you and I talked about when we did your assessment because almost every entrepreneur uses it just a little bit as escape mechanism to go into the future and not imagine. Mm -hmm. And that impacts our joy because our life just isn't quite showing up like that. Yes. And then we beat ourselves up. It's the number one cause of self-esteem challenges, unmet expectations. You know, the day after I did my assessment with you, Dave, I shared this mm -hmm. idea in my networking group because you, you opened my eyes to something so important because Yes, it is important to visualize that wonderful thing that we want to achieve, that yes. whether it's the goal or the creation of the company or the finishing of the book or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I believe the way you said it to me was we have to take an action step and then celebrate that we did that. But what we tend to do instead is compare our present to that future that we're not at yet and then we feel lacking or we feel like we, we haven't done enough or we're not good enough or, you know, we get into that negative thinking instead of celebrating what we have done. Is that correct, what I'm saying? That's, that's correct. 
poignant moment. I'll never, ever forget it. I'm on the first call with a new client. A man, he's about 55 years old. Uh-huh. And he said, Dave, I can almost touch it. I can almost taste it. Why can't I have it? And then he said, what's wrong with me? And then he punctuated with this, does God not love me? Oh. And it made me cry. Because what I knew was he was using his gift of vivid visualization to escape into the future to imagine. Because mm-hmm. his secret desire was a, a life with less stress and easier, which doesn't exist on this planet. <laughs> so I got to teach him how to engage in life and embrace obstacles and connect and serve and create value and contribute and use this gift of visualization, not to try to create tangible reality. It doesn't. What it does very biologically is it ignites part of our brain that's normally dormant, ignites our passion, and the passion supports the action required to create the dream. Nobody gets to skip the work. Right. Oh, but if we use it. this enormous gift, oh my goodness, we're on fire while we're doing it. Same work. Yeah. Or we're in fantasy trying to escape. And it's boring, and I said a minute ago, boring, mundane, repetitive, burdensome, and hard. Ah! <laughs> so which one do we want to do? Passion-driven or hard? I love that. And let's pick up right there when we come back from this break. We'll be right back. Is this working okay for you? Yes, very well. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, so passion-driven, or I'm going to... Bring us back and then we'll go right to there. I love that. Okay. And welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. I am having a very exciting conversation here with Dave Blanchard, the CEO of the Og Mandino Leadership Institute. And we're talking about, well, let's face it, guys, we're talking about some really important secrets for success. And one of the ones we were just talking about, Dave and I, is the ability to be able to visualize. You know, dream that dream. Think about what that end goal is that you really want to create. But Dave is teaching us right now, how do we work with that? How do we not get caught in the trap of constantly looking at that dream and feeling less than or like a failure even because we're not there yet? So Dave, what are some tips or, or what are some things people can do? Because you, you were just talking about inspired, passionate work or ugh, drudgery and that sort of thing. And I know that feeling. I know that feeling when, when I'm in the middle of writing a book and I really get to that place where the creation is flowing, time goes away. And I know other people out there know that experience when they're creating whatever they create in, in the passion of, of what they're doing in their life. But when we are dragging ourselves through it, oh my God, it's like a minute stretches into hours. And that's an awful way to go through life. And I think this point you're making that having the, the potential of passionate work, and yes, there's still work. And that's one of the points that you were making I really wanna get back to as well. I think obviously there, we all have to do the work, but we can either drag through it or we can bliss through it, kind of is what I hear you saying. Is that correct? Yes, and there's truth to a certain magic that begins to happen, but doesn't happen from visualizing myself driving a Ferrari and then being disappointed. Right. I, I go into the future, and my desire is to engage. I'm going to say the words again, embrace obstacles, connect, serve, create value, contribute. And I'm getting an inspired idea. It ignites my passion, drives my work. The focus isn't on where I'm going to be. The focus is on where I am right now. It's mm-hmm. taking this most important thing we'll talk about today. It's taking the clay we've been given and choosing. I choose me. I choose me. I'm going to stop wishing I had somebody else's clay. Well, they inherited money or their life is easy. It doesn't matter. It's not your option. Your option is your clay. 
you choose it. Now, you're living present in the now, your primary residence, not in your mind, mm -hmm. in the now. Now you go to your mind intentionally to get an inspired idea about how to take what you have and create the next millimeter and then celebrate the creation. You live here. Because if you live in your mind, you're always disappointed by this. But if you live here, you're always celebrating what you're creating. Get the inspired idea, ignite the passion, drive the action, create the next millimeter, celebrate. Inspired idea, ignite the passion, next millimeter, celebrate the idea. Guess what? All of a sudden, you're living in your dream. It's actually happened, and you've already moved past it. <laughs> you're, into, you're working on the next one. You actually fall in love with the journey of creating the dream. There's mm -hmm. joy in the work, joy in the process. That's what makes creation so joyful. When we get there, we've already moved on to the next thing because creators love to create. Mm -hmm. Fantasizers love to escape. Uh... And fantasizers never do create. They just live in frustration. They're broke. They're broken. They're angry. They're disappointed. And too many people, Paul, have been teaching the tangible realities created by vivid visualization. And that is an absolute lie. Now, That's vivid visualization to ignite passion and drive action is like the universe lines up. Everything starts coming together. People come into our world who can serve us and who we can serve, and we speed up creation to its fastest possible pace. If we want to make the now our primary residence, we go to our mind for the inspired idea instead of living in the fantasy, frustrated by the life and beating ourselves up. This is a fundamental challenge in this country. Fundamental challenge. And it's a huge, huge point you're making because I think you're right. There was a teaching for a while that all you got to do is visualize it and feel it. And the more intensely you do, it will just come to you and it won't be hard and it won't be work and all that. And I, I've had many a client sitting in my office upset and frustrated because they're doing all of that and nothing is happening. And yet they aren't using the vision, as you say, to then ignite the passion in the now and do the work. They, they want to do the work. They just want life to be easier and less stressful. Yes. And for those listening, if you've been in that space, I want to wrap my arms around and give you a big hug because there are times when we would all like it to be a little easier, right? A little less stressful, yes. but it doesn't exist on this planet. It's not here. It's not possible. Yes. If I go and make $50,000 a month, all my problems would be solved. I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. Your problems would just begin. <laughs> You'd just have a whole new set of problems. That's yeah, right. absolutely. That's right. Now maybe the problems would not be how to pay the rent, but the problems would be in some other area. Maybe Taxes or whatever. Right. You know, somebody stealing your money or a bad investment. Exactly. Can I take you one of the quick places? Really important. Please. So. We want to make sure we fit this in today. Mm -hmm. The reason why this is so important is one, managing the gift of visualization so you can ignite passion, drive action. Right. The primary reason is that entrepreneurial independent thinkers, 88% of the time have extremely high levels of empathy and intuition. Now, with all of this noise going on in our heads, one, we may not be able to access the gift and get the intuition in the first place, or we may get it and talk ourselves out of it. We rob ourselves of our natural gifting in terms of connecting with people. Next, anybody here procrastinate? Anybody? <laughs> oh, what, no. What happens when we finally jump in and do the work? What do we always say? That wasn't so hard. Yeah. Right. Why'd I wait so long? I wish I'd have done it sooner. It's yeah. not a sooner. Delay, delay, jump in, surprise. What's happening? We finally shut off the noise and embraced our natural genius. And that it was so incredible, it surprised us. 
So we have all these beautiful people with the gift of vivid visualization using it destructively and as a result, robbing themselves of intuitive ideas about how to serve and robbing them of the gift of knowing what needs to be done mm. until they can't procrastinate anymore because everybody on this call has procrastinated, knows what I'm saying. When you jump in and do it, you go, wow, that wasn't so hard. No kidding. <laughs> Let's stop playing that game and start embracing our gifts. And that will require that you shut off some of this noise, this destructive noise. So just know that when you're in fantasy, you're frustrated with life, you're hating yourself, and you're robbing you and everyone around you of your natural gifting. Mm. Oh. And Dave, do you believe, because I can hear the voice of some people out there saying, yeah, but I, I'm not creative, or I don't have any natural gifts, you know? I mean, I, I wouldn't even know how to begin. What do you I say? I smile and I go, I said this to a group last night of 10 leaders in a business. I said to them, if you worry, you're creative. You're just using the tool of creativity destructively. Mm. So anybody here worry? Every one of them worried. <laughs> if you're playing stuff in your mind, like one of your children's got a problem, or a spouse said something, or a companion said something, and you can't get out of your mind, somebody's offended you, and you're playing it over and over, that's the gift that creates the creativity. But if it's being used to catastrophize and play out worst-case scenarios, it's destroying your life. But it's the same gift. It's just the... It's the shadow side of the gift. I see. You want to learn how to use the gift. Mm. You worry, you're creative. Interesting. That's really fascinating. And I think it's important to share with our listeners that mm -hmm. you're not somebody who's been coasting along all your life. You have known disaster and, and what some people would call failure firsthand, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, I was a real estate developer millions of dollars in assets. Real estate market collapsed and through 86 through 89 in California. Mm -hmm. I, was the, I was the personal guarantor of all the corporate lines of credit. I owed a million dollars in 1990. I spent 10 years paying that back. August of 2000, the last $14,000 check was sent and mailed and the debt was paid. Mm. Oh. oh, that must be, I can't even imagine. I'm, you know, when you think about it, it'd be nice to imagine making a million, but being a million in debt, that's terrifying. And starting a new career as a writer and director, because I've been doing educational films, mm. uh, one on child abuse on every military base in the world and 30,000 school districts in the U.S. and Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. I love film, but it was an application. I made it a profession. It's a brand new profession and used that to pay off the million dollars. Wow, by the way, you and your wife were raising seven children. Yes, and now 27 grandkids. We married four daughters during that time. Can you oh, imagine? My oh my goodness. It costs how much? <laughs> so yes, I want to say to our listeners, if you're in a hole right now, or you're in a place that feels really dark, this man is a living example of how you can come out of a place that dark to a place so filled with light and then spend your life sharing that light with others. And when we come back from this break, we're going to talk to Dave a little bit more about coming from that dark place into this beautiful, bright place where he is right now. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm, so glad we're gonna, I'm so glad we're going to go here. Oh, good. Okay. Wow. Well, you know, I have to tell you, when you and I did my assessment, and, and I think, well, I, you know what, I'm just going to wait and share it when you're talking about this. Okay. We'll save it for the show, as they say. Good. Okay, here we go. Welcome back to Change It Up with Paula Shaw Radio. We are talking about the greatest habits in the world today. And developing those habits is critical to success and happy living. And I'm talking today with ex an expert on that whole 
topic, Dave Blanchard, who is the CEO of the Og Mandino Leadership Institute. So if you are just joining us, let me recap a little bit. We've been talking about the importance of being able to visualize what you want, but not get stuck in the fantasy of that visualization. Be able to use that as fuel to do the work, to create in the present moment so that you can achieve that beautiful vision. But we're also talking about the fact that we're not all always in an ideal place. The money in the bank account isn't necessarily all we need. The circumstances in life, maybe it's health, maybe it's where you're living, who knows? But we, we have to deal sometimes with dark times. And I'm asking Dave Blanchard, what do you do when you're in that spot? Because he's been there. He just shared with us he was in over a million dollars of debt and and found the wherewithal to come through that marrying four daughters raising seven children keeping a marriage together for many many years dave so many people would say that's just not possible how did you do it well first of all i married ramona <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a living saint. <laughs> she is she is a living saint i have to tell you that during that dark time she never complained once yeah. ever <laughs> It's unbelievable. Oh, she, she, said, she said, I trusted you could figure it out. Great. Wow. What, a, what a supporter. Yeah, she oh, was an angel. One day. <laughs> here's, the, one day. Yeah, here's the bottom line. We're developing real estate, lots of properties, millions of dollars in assets. I'm officially retired. I've started a rock band. I went on a <laughs> tour. You're talking I, about I, I, yeah. I wrote this is this was back in 1985. 1985. Yeah. I'm I'm 32 years old. I drive a Ferrari. <laughs> I've got black leather pants, a motley colored jacket. I've grown my hair and beard out, and I'm I'm a guitarist and a keyboardist. And I I put the group together, and we had some fun. <laughs> that was that was my passion when I was when I was younger was playing in a band so I wanted to do it again and mm -hmm. so that was the retirement well the world fell apart the real estate market collapsed and I was the guarantor of the million dollar lines of credit mm -hmm. and so when the company couldn't pay it the bank came to me <coughs> oh, yeah. now I decided I'm going to become a writer right so I come and I write four feature film scripts in a row six months apiece and I might tell you. I had a gentleman who was working with me at the same time, studying the same Truby story structure. I finished the first script he'd written his Academy Award speech. True story. I finished the second script he had polished his Academy Award speech. It, the story just went on. He never wrote the script. I wrote four of them. That's the difference between a vision and taking action, right? But at the end of two years, we had all these educational films and they stopped selling like overnight because California is our biggest buyer mm -hmm. and the bill that funded them was rescinded. Oh. And I just was desperate. I mean, I was desperate. And one night I just made the decision. I had a million dollar life insurance policy and it was getting ready to lapse. And I spent the next four nights trying to figure out how to do that. And Got to the night when it's all planned, and fortunately, the sun came up the next morning. Thank fortunately. Goodness. I've known and too many thank people God. who stood in that place. It didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And I remember crying out, I long to cry to the God of my youth, but the God of my youth will not hear my cry. I must change my God or change my cry. Mm. And it was my cry. I was waiting for someone to save me, you know, put money on my doorstep or visualize it into a reality. Something didn't happen that way. Then I made this promise. I said, will you show me how to dig out of this hole? I will spend the rest of my life helping other people do likewise. Mm -hmm. And over the next year, eight years, it was a pretty thorough training. Wow. Pretty thorough training. And when that last check, a $14,000 check, was put in the mail, it was the same year that Betty called me and said, the rights to the greatest salesman are available. Oh, my God. I'm getting could, could we be any more prepared mm -hmm. to take those principles now, not to become famous, mm 
I have no guru in me. I don't drink the Kool-Aid, you know. It's, what can we do to change a person's life? So we're measuring all these habits of thinking, creating coaching materials can help make these changes. And 18 years later, we got this thing nailed down. Mm. And it's so exciting to see lives transformed, applying correct principles who have also decided to change their cry. Now, if people are interested in coaching from the Ogmandino Institute, mm -hmm. where do they find information on that or how did they get in touch with you all? We want them to go to habitfinder.com forward slash Paula. Oh, okay. Start by taking the assessment. Oh, good. To find out what thought processes. So you, you get to know what we know. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, how do you know that? Mm -hmm. Well, we perfected the science that discovers it. Yes. Then spend 30 minutes with one of our customer service representatives who's a habit finder specialist. And let them help you put some of the pieces together. Then if you want to do something, you might want to get a book. You might want to get into a group coaching. You might want to... Then, then they can help facilitate that and direct you to the correct people who can help you do those things. But before we ever take somebody on as a coach, we want them to get in touch with these habits of thinking and make sure they're ready to go here. Because almost everybody, well, that's who that sounded terrible. Too many want their circumstances to shift. Right. Self-improvement is personal. It's mm. personal improvement. You change inside. You change the habits and you show up differently and it begins to happen. Yes. You start inside and some people just aren't ready for that. So we're looking for clients who are actually ready to make the shift, to get to the real stuff. That stuff I learned during those really rough eight years is very thorough training. Mm -hmm. Debts are paid, daughters are married, seven kids through college. <sighs> now let's take on the world. That is I had to take on myself first. Yeah, and that's such I, a good point. I want to reiterate that. Change doesn't happen from the outside in. It needs to begin on the inside, and then seemingly miraculously, all the outside things change. But the work has to begin. Yeah from within as a man thinketh mm -hmm. it's not politically correct but he says let a man radically alter his thoughts and he'll be astonished at the rapid transformation it will affect in the material conditions of his life oh i love that i love james that. allen yeah. um, beautiful it's a and true statement very very true and, and I, you know, I want to just share one thing that, that you helped me see too, Dave. If there are any of our listeners out there right now who are thinking it's too late for me, you know, I, I, I can't turn it around now. I've got too many responsibilities. I just got to keep doing what I'm doing to get through the day and keep feeding my family. Don't let that perspective stop you. Because when Dave and I did my assessment, I'll be perfectly honest with you, and I'll tell him there were some, some things about my life and where I am at this point and, and um, success or, or you know, lack thereof or however you want to look at it. And what Dave helped me see was every single thing that has happened to me happened for a reason and serves the purpose of creating who I am today. So this vehicle, if you will, that wants to create has been honed over time by these experiences. And so rather than feel less than or discouraged by that, I should just look at, at those experiences as perfecting the instrument, so to speak. Not that I'm saying I'm perfect, but working toward that end of fine-tuning the instrument, right? You, you started out talking about how you wanted to, you had a band, you wanted to be a rock star. But you have to 
tune your instrument before you can play beautiful music, don't you? And so you helped me change my perspective and realize that I've, I've been in a tuning process. And, and now it's the opportunity and the time to play beautiful music. And I love about what you do, Dave. I just ask everybody who's listening just to ponder the question. And I ask you this when we met. In what ways have you been uniquely prepared for this moment in time mm. to serve? Mm. That is so beautiful. And Dave, I hate to say this, but we've run out of time. Mm. And that's kind of such a beautiful place to stop. So again, I do want to uh, give the website that listeners can go to to take this amazing assessment very simple it won't take you more than 10 or 15 minutes and it's the www dot is it the or just habit finder david just simply habit finder habit find h-a-b-i-t f-i-n-d-e-r dot com forward slash paula as in change it up with Paula. <laughs> so Dave, thank you so much for being my guest today. This was just a beautiful, enlightening, just magical show. And I, we did it. We did it. We finally did it. We, we overcame the technology and we made it happen. <laughs> and I'm so happy. And it's I been want, a real privilege. Real uh, privilege. And for me. And to our listeners, please find us on all major podcast platforms here at KCBQ in San Diego on Saturday and Sunday evenings at 7 o'clock. And if you cannot remember any of those places, just ask Alexa. She'll find us on iHeart or any of the major podcast platforms. And please check out our Change It Up Radio Facebook page and Instagram. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you want to know about. So we will look forward to seeing you all next week. And again, my thanks to you, Dave Blanchard.